Welcome to the heart.org. Uh, my name is Professor Tony Gershit from Leicester, UK, and I'm here at uh, ESC in Munich 2012. And uh, we're discussing some of the hotline sessions and late breaking trials. And I'm privileged to have with me uh, today uh, Eduardo uh, Kamenzind, uh, who was perhaps one of the first people to bring to our attention back at ESC in 2006 the whole issue about uh, concerning stent thrombosis and uh, the risks associated with it and it was a very valuable message because it made us reflect uh, on what was happening and I think uh, as a result a number of developments occurred uh, issues about antiplatelet therapy that I think have led to better patient care. And I think out of that uh, Eduardo is that we developed the PROTECT trial it sort of evolved from it uh, very early on. Yourself and William Wines and uh, many of us were involved in, in the early stages. So here you are some six years later uh, with a study that tells us something about stent thrombosis and uh, the PROTECT trial is going to, about to be uh, presented. So give us uh, some information. Tell us a bit about the background, why, where it evolved from uh, in addition to what I said. Correct. The background is, uh, is very important, is, um, is a key issue of this trial, because uh, it was designed to uh, explore the incidence of stent thrombosis uh, using commercially available stents. However, we selected two with very different healing properties. So we selected on the one hand the, I would call it, weak uh, endeavor uh, stand, and we compared it to uh, versus the, uh, the the strongest, if you want, the most potent at that time uh, stand that was a cipher that we will call C says from now onwards. So that was basically, as you see, the concept comparing uh, a good healing versus a stand that has a stronger anti-proliferative. So the sort of point you're making, I think it's an important one, is that even though neither stent is really currently standard of care, the basic principle about the degree of healing is a very important one and will have right. messages that are contemporary now. Is that Absolutely. Okay, so I've picked Absolutely. up that. So tell us a bit about the study. So, I mean, I know it very well because of uh, being involved, but there will be many people out there who, uh, who are on It's quite uh, a simple, pragmatic study. It was a very simple, uh, pragmatic study uh, aiming uh, to look for the incidence of defined, definite, and pro or probable stent thrombosis. According to the ARC definition. At, according to the ARC definition, at three years, so with a long uh, time follow-up uh, between these two mentioned uh, stands. Uh, it was being, it was randomized and open labeled so the physician and the patient was aware of what, what they had. Uh, however, all personnel that was dealing with the data was totally blind. Yeah. So the, the CRF uh, looked at in a blind so a probe design. Right. Okay. So the two stents were the, because I don't think we've mentioned them yet, were the cipher versus the, the endeavor. Right. As uh, uh, I mentioned that in, the, in the introduction, it was uh, the, the endeavor the, the, that was healing like a bare metal stent versus the cipher that were, had a more potent, if you want, anti-proliferative uh, property. And perhaps more delayed realization as a result. So, right. how many patients? Well, that is a very good point. Uh, we, de we designed it. Uh, I mentioned the superiority. We were expecting with this healing concept that the endeavor was superior to uh, the cipher. And uh, we anticipated from the data that were available at that time that we would have, after three years, an incidence of 1.5% of definite and probable stent thrombosis in the endeavor arm yep. versus 2.5 percent in the C cipher arm. That was our predicted estimation, and uh, uh, we powered the study for a 90 percent uh, power, if you want, with uh, this difference of 40 percent between the two devices. That was a kind of 
pre-specified. The data we had at the time, it was the data that was available for Endeavour 5 uh, and the Cypher data, it's all averaged out, and you had this 40% this difference, and that led to right. 8,000. And that led to the need of uh, enrolling uh, approximately uh, 9,000 patients, if you want to be precise, 8,800, 4,400 per hour. Okay, so, so very big. So for that time of end point, definite and probable, followed up, up to three years, you need 4,400 patients okay. per hour. Important, big study. Tell us what the primary outpoint, uh, outcome was and uh, what the results were. So the primary endpoint showed that we had uh, no difference in probable and definite stent thrombosis at three years with an incidence of 1.4 2% in the Endeavour arm versus 1.8% in the Cypher arm. That's interesting. So this difference w corresponded not to the 40% as predicted, but to a difference of 20% yes. at three years. Okay, and just uh, remind us how many patients actually were analysed in the end? What was the follow-up? Uh, the follow-up rate was 96%, uh, uh, so it was a very hard high, work. very hard, very well followed. Okay, so it's, that gives some robustness to the right. results. So here we are, there's something's changed that was and often at the end of a study, something's different from that was predicted. The Endeavour performed roughly 1.42 versus predicted 1.5. You something was better in the cipher arm. You are, you are pointing to something very important, that the predicted value for the endeavour uh, are very close yeah. to, to what we actually observed. Yeah. And that uh, uh, the cipher arm was doing better why? than expected. So that is absolutely the key issue, is why uh, are they, is it performing better? What we did, and it was pre-specified, that is an important point, uh, we did a time analysis. Mm. And uh, uh, this time analysis uh, compared, if you want, uh, from zero to one year and from one year to three years. Yes. And uh, this time analysis uh, has also a kind of background is that uh, uh, in the PROTECT trial, the, uh, if you want, uh, the use of dual antiplatelet therapy was close to 90% up to one year and dropped after one year uh, from 90 to 40%. That was, in the light of when we designed the trial, something very unexpected yes. because uh, at that time we the expected uh, uh, kind of uh, use of dual antiplatelet was approximately 80-90% up to three years, uh, to three months, and dropped after three months to levels of 40%. So, so the reason for doing the trial, the virus about late stent thrombosis, led to a change in practice which altered the incidence in the cypherum. But also, I suspect, we have got better at doing stenting in that uh, people, were, because of the risk of stenting from first people were doing high pressures, doing, getting good angiographic results in Cuba. Did, would you agree? Uh, possibly yes, however, uh, that would have influenced both yes, arms similarly. Yes. Yes. And uh, uh, that is why I believe uh, the importance of uh, uh, the dual uh, antiplatelet, uh, uh, if you want to use, is, a, is the most important issue because, as I mentioned before, the, uh, the time analysis, that when you do it at, from zero to one year and from one year onwards, distinguish the two periods, if you want the high dual antiplatelet yeah. uh, uh, therapy period versus the low dual antiplatelet therapy period. So here's the issue. We've come to a new paradigm. Mm -hmm. We're using modern stents. They're getting low stent thrombosis rates. You're suggesting, I think, 
that we should still, even in the contemporary era, even with conformable healing stents, be using dual antiplatelet therapy for at least a year. That's the implication of what you just said. That would be the implication because when, for instance, you look at the incidence of our definite and probable stent thrombosis up to one year, when both groups are under dual antiplatelet therapy for over 80%, yes. then the incidence is absolutely the same. Okay. Very please. simple. Let, Let me just please. add that. And when you look it further on, from one year to three years, where the dual antiplatelet therapy drops to less than 40%, there the curve are diverging with an incidence of definite and probable stent thrombosis, which is four times higher in the C6 arm versus the E6 arm. But the point is that with contemporary stents, this may not necessarily be applicable. And we look to the various studies, such as that and the other studies that are looking at shorter term, noticing that Abbott contemporary stent science is only three months dual antiplatelet therapy, the, the question's still out there. How long should we use dual antiplatelet therapy for? Indeed, the question is still out, and PROTECT tells you why it's still out. You see, we had uh, to plan a study with uh, nearly 9,000 patients, followed up until three years, to try to make the point for a 40% difference. Yeah. So I believe we have to be also very careful with all the information that is given to us also with newer generation stand because actually the trial are not powered for what they are meant to tell us. Okay, we need to finish. We could talk and would often do talk for hours about this thing. But the important message is that in contemporary stents and DEVA type stents, the incidence at three years is very low. We don't know, that's 1.42, it's fantastic, it's a, we've done well, we don't know if this is to do with stents still, we don't know if it's the length of dual antiplatelet therapy, but the study is a very important study, because it's given the important information, you're to be congratulated on running such a pragmatic, important study. So thank you very much for joining us, and we look forward to some of the sub-analysis of the PROTECT trial. Thank, thank you. you very much, Anthony.